Hi guys, welcome back. In today's video, we are back to Intel's first generation of the i7 processor. I've already covered the Extreme 6 core in one of my previous videos, and so this time we are going to focus on the more affordable and mainstream version of the quad core chip. The i7 870 released 14 years ago in September 2009 with an MSRP of around $300. It has four physical cores with hyperthreading, and out of the box, it can boost one of its cores up to 3.6 GHz, adhering to its 95 watt TDP. This CPU works with a socket LGA 1156 and was manufactured on the 45 nanometer process under codename Linfield. When compared to the Enthusiast X58 platform, P55 chipset only supported dual channel memory and mere 16 lanes of PCI Express connectivity. However, this was reflected in significantly lower price and after all, quad SLI setups are not for everyone. For today's testing, I'm using Gigabyte's P55A UD3R motherboard fitted with 16GB of Corsair's Vengeance DDR3 memory, which is running at 1600MHz. The i7 was cooled by 316mm liquid cooler and as always, there's the bottleneck edition of the RTX 3080. Once again, I would not dare to run this CPU at stock speeds, so let's jump quickly to BIOS and set the overclocks for the 870. And I gotta say, finding limit of my silicon was relatively easy with this motherboard. And many blue screens of death later, I've settled with a base clock frequency of 215 MHz and combined with 20x multiplier, this resulted in, yes, you've guessed it, 4.3 GHz overclock. And at this point, poor CPU core was pulling in excess of 1.45 volts. CPU benchmarks always start with Cinebench R23. At stock speed, the 870 scored just shy of 500 points in the single thread run and 2476 points in the multi threader test. When overclocked, single thread score improved by nearly 30% to 644 points. The multi threaded score seen almost 40% improvement and now at nearly 3500 points. The almighty 990X is of course faster in the multi threaded test, having two extra cores helps, but it looks like the single thread score is not that much better with a difference of under 3%. Oh, I cannot wait to test the second generation of i7 soon. 7-Zips Dictionary Benchmark scored the 870 with around 21 jibs and overclocked only help with the decompression test. Running Blender's BMW car render demo took this i7 nearly 17 minutes to complete at stock speed. However, overclocking squeezed this time by 28%, down to 12 minutes. Last test before we move on to game benchmarking is Handbrake. I'm using 10GB 4K video file and a fast 1080p 30 preset. At stock speed, this task took 54 minutes and 31 seconds, and at 4.3GHz, the time was reduced to 47 minutes, which translated into 13% decrease. All of the game benchmarks are run at 1080p, and by using powerful GPUs such as the RTX 3080, we are hopefully forcing the i7 to be the bottleneck. F1 2018 first, using ultra high preset and a Japan circuit. Strange, but this game didn't like the CPU overclock. Stock results are objectively better at 104 FPS on average and with 1% lows at 64. When compared to Big Daddy, the 990X, 870 is slower by 17%. Still, I think this is a great result. Third rally was next, and here it was quite the opposite. At stock speeds, I saw 78 FPS on average with 1% lows at 50. When overclocked, there was a huge spike to nearly 110 FPS on average. This game really took advantage of the faster clock speed for a 39% increase and just enough to match the 990X at stock speed. Deus Ex Mankind is getting old, but it still remains to be quite CPU demanding title. With very high preset, the stock i7-870 pushed 62 FPS on average with 1% lows sitting at 42. Overclocking pushed the averages to 69. Nice. 
This 11% uplift meant it was on par with the 990X. Next game tested was Forza Horizon 4 with Ultra Preset. Stock i7 managed 82 FPS on average with 1% lows at 59. Overclocking squeezed additional 5 FPS, but despite this, the 990X is clearly faster in this title. Could it be thanks to those two extra cores? Shadow of the Tomb Raider can really punish all the systems. The CP utilization often hits 100% when using the built in benchmark. The 870 managed to deliver 65 FPS on average, which was a solid result, but the 1% lows at 13 are really awful. Overclocking helped pushing the average FPS by 20% to 79 and nearly double the 1% lows to 24, but I still think that is too low for smooth gameplay. The 990X is significantly faster, I'm starting to think that those extra calls are really helping. A CPU testing classic up next, it's Rainbow Six Siege. At stock speed, the i7-870 managed 146 FPS on average with 1% lows at 99. When overclocked, I saw a nice 10% bump to 160 FPS on average. Once again, 990X is faster, and this time by around 30%. Representing a more modern game, here's Far Cry 6 with Ultra Preset. At stock speed, 870 pushed average of 47 FPS and 1% lows were sitting at 32. Overclocking resulted in less than significant 9% uplift, bumping the average to 52. Interestingly, there is not much of a difference between 870 and the 990X in this title. Lastly, let's test Cyberpunk 2077. Here, the stock 870 delivered solid 57 FPS on average with 1% lows at 30. Overclocking did very little to the average FPS, but what's worse, it dragged the 1% low slightly. When looking at the 6 core 990X, 870 is behind by around 35%. And there we go. With all of the testing complete, I think it's only fair that we praise the first generation of the mainstream i7 processors. Just a few years ago, 4 cores and 8 threads was all you really needed. Faster, more efficient and not that much more expensive than even the best core to quad processors, the first generation had it all. As we've seen with some of the game benchmarks, 870 can also reach dangerously close to Intel's extreme offering, often only saved by those two extra cores. I'd be really interested to see how does the 870 compare to i7-965. With little to no competition from AMD, buying Intel was the smart thing to do. Sadly, it also meant that 4 cores and 8 threads was all we got, until the 8th gen. Have you ever owned first generation i7? Kindly leave a comment down below. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, please hit the like button and consider subscribing. I'll see you in the next one.